Hey, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief at theserverside.com, and you can follow me on Twitter, CameronMCNZ. And for now, I'd like to talk to you about GitHub and specifically rebasing some branches on GitHub. So I've got a tutorial here that will show you not only how to pull your, your repository from GitHub, but also do some rebranching, show you how the rebranching operations work, and then show you what you have to do to push those changes back to the GitHub server. To demonstrate the GitHub rebase, obviously you need a GitHub account with a GitHub repository. I have one here under my Potemkin account. It's also under my Cameron MCNZ account called Rebase GitHub. As you can see, it's got a few commits on it and a feature and a master branch. I'm not a big fan of, of how that looks, uh, but I am a big fan of how the article I wrote looks on the server side. And uh, so you can see that's sort of a graphical visualization of it. Anyways, I need a copy of that. So I'm going to go to the repository and clone it. That means getting the clone URL, opening up a terminal window, issuing the git clone command, pasting in the URL, and then CDing into the new folder that's been created. And if I look at git status, you can see that I'm on the master branch. Probably at this point, it's not a bad idea just to go in and check out the feature branch. So I'll do that as well. Git checkout feature. We're now in the feature branch. Now let's take a look at what the branches look like with the graph option in the log command. So as you can see, I've got two branches. Uh, one branch is named feature. It breaks off of the master branch after commit number B. The master branch has a commit number C. This feature branch has commits D and E. If I actually go in here, you'll notice that the feature branch has files A, B, D, and E. Whereas the master branch has files A, B, and C. It doesn't have D and E. The diagram that I've got on the article on the server side kind of tries to describe that just so you have a good idea of what's going on where. So that's the files in the master branch, that's the files in the feature branch. And what I plan to do is take this feature branch and rebase it onto the master branch. And when that happens, I'll end up with a scenario that looks something like this. The D and E commits of the feature branch will break away from commit B and instead be put onto the tip of the master branch, which is commit C. And then I'll end up with new commits representing D and E after commit C on master. So that's what the rebase does. The other nice thing is after this rebase happens, the feature branch is gonna have all of its files plus the files that it didn't have from the master branch. And that's specifically file C.txt. As you can see, C.txt is not used there. And so how do you do that? Well, you just go in here, you do a git rebase, you specify the name that you're rebasing onto, that's master, and then you specify the name of the branch that you want to rebase onto it, that's feature branch. It all goes swimmingly, and then it's a good idea to take a look at the log again. And you can see that this log is now very linear. I don't have any branches off of the commit history, unlike this branch that I had earlier. And that's the whole idea of doing this git rebase of your GitHub branches. You now get a nice linear history. And I can push this up to master. Now if I do a git push origin, uh, first of all, which branch am I on? Uh, git checkout, git status I meant to say. Currently on the feature branch. Okay, let's push. So git push origin. It'll ask for my credentials. Those will go through. But you'll notice that it's going to fail. It's going to reject the push. And the reason it rejects is that GitHub does not like it when you start playing around with the commit history, which a rebase does. We've moved commits around. We've deleted two commits. We've actually created, put those commits somewhere else. And it actually creates brand new commits uh, in the commit history. GitHub isn't having any of that. So it's saying, look, uh, we don't like what you've done. We're not going to accept the push. Now you can actually force it. So you can say git pushed origin and use the force switch. So invoke your Jedi powers, provide your credentials, 
get push force. I you gotta type your password in properly. And now you see it's actually push those changes up to the server. So success, we now have that rebase gone to GitHub. Now, if I take a look at the feature branch, notice I've got files A, B, C, D, and E. But if I check out master, you notice that master only has A, B, and C.txt files. We wanna get D and E. So one trick you can do is after merging, after rebasing the feature branch onto master, you could now rebase master onto feature and after doing that then master will get all the files that are in feature that it doesn't have so i can actually do this i can go get rebase and rebase now this is the opposite now rebase onto feature before i rebased onto master and who am i going to rebase onto feature i'm going to rebase master which branch am i on i'm on master and notice if i do an ls command now I've got all five files, A, B, C, D, and E, whereas just a moment ago before the rebase, I only had A, B, and C. And at this point in time, both the master branch and the feature branch are totally in sync. They've got all the same files. And since they're totally in sync, they don't actually have different commit points. So if I look at the graph right now, you'll actually see that these two branches point to the exact same commit. And there you go both feature and master are pointing at the same commit. Now I can push this up to GitHub as well. Git push force origin. And so long as there's no branch permissions put on the master branch, this will go up swimmingly. And indeed this has. Um, and that was indeed the master branch going up. And I can even go to my GitHub repository and just take a look and see if indeed we have got that push up there. And so, by the way, this is what the state of our repository currently looks like. We've now got all of these different commits and they've been pushed to the server. Yes, this is the one that I want you to look at. So we've now got, this is the tip of our repository, uh, E double prime, I've called it, master points to it, feature points to it, and it's got all of the files in it. And so now let's go take a look over at GitHub and see what GitHub is up to. Here's the rebase project. I'll go in, take a look at insights and see what the insights has to say. There's the network. And we can now see that according to this network graph, the tip here is both what feature and the master branch are pointing to. So we've now successfully pushed these files up. And if I take a look at the code, you can see that right now the master branch has A, B, C, D, and E. And if we look at the feature branch, it has the exact same set of files. So there you go, that's a successful GitHub rebase. Now, let me just say you really shouldn't ever rebase master onto another branch. You can rebase branches on a master, but you shouldn't rebase master onto another branch. That can really mess up other developers. So avoid doing that. And then the other thing that I would say is, is you probably shouldn't be pushing branches that you pulled from GitHub. You shouldn't be rebasing branches you pulled from GitHub and then pushing them back up. Do the rebases with your topic branches, with the branches you've created for the features that you're working on merge those back into your local development branch and then push that branch up to the server. But don't pull branches, rebase, do rebases with them and then push it up. It'll really cause problems for other developers. There you go, that's all there is to it. That's how you can rebase your GitHub branches. So if you wanna learn more, head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there and this whole video was written up on that site. So there's a lot more details there. Plus we've got all sorts of stuff on DevOps and Git and GitHub and just enterprise software development in general. So head over to the serverside.com if you wanna follow my antics, follow me on Twitter at CameronMCNZ and subscribe on YouTube.